Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord, we please stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. We exalt you. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Eh? He saved us from destruction. Praise the name of Jesus. All right. Well, it looks like you're ready for tonight. Because it's going to be very powerful tonight and for the men tomorrow morning. Praise God. So, if you, men, you're here tonight, come tomorrow morning. Because we're going to have some apostle, AJ, right here that's here. Praise God. Come on. Prophet Steve Davis right there in the middle. And, of course, the Holy Ghost. You know, um, I, I, I just want to bring up a good friend. I marvel how God puts people in your life. I marvel and overwhelm at the worship team. They came from Riverside, Corona. Fresno? Huh? Okay. Pastor Robles. Pastor Robles. You, yeah, I didn't hear it, okay? And uh, from Long Beach, he had the farthest. <laughs> and uh, my brother-in-law back there on the drums from L.A. And, you know, as I was listening in to do a sound check, I was just overwhelmed. Who am I? Who am I? that God would bring a team together with a heart of worship. But some reason, I bumped into it, and they're here, praise God. But let me get back to my friend. Pastor Angel is such a good friend of mine. And we have such a good relationship. We can laugh, we can joke, we can talk about the spiritual things. But because of this man, what you see here, because of his faith and the favor of God in his life, you see a building that someone blessed him with. And so Turning Point Fellowship is a church, but, you know, instead of me, I'm going to have Let's give the Lord a hand for Pastor Angel Baruch as he comes up. Uh, we're like Paul and Silas. <laughs> yes, Paul. <laughs> Praise God. It's good to be here. Uh, welcome uh, all of you here you know, to the house of God. This is your house. Yeah. Amen. Spanish, they say, es su casa. It's your house. It's your house. Enjoy yourselves here. You're free here. In this house, we're free to worship God, to lift up your hands, to give a shout of victory, a shout of glory to God. Amen. A shout of praise. It's a, it's a house of liberty. For where the, where the spirit is, there's liberty. Amen. The liberty to live your life out for Christ. And uh, that's what we're here for. We're here to... Hear the word, receive the word, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're going to hear the word spoken today. You're going to receive if you came expecting. I hope you came expecting, right, Angel? Came expecting to hear from God, to get a word from God. I know I'm excited. I'm super excited. Uh, even as a senior pastor, you still get nervous. I'm nervous in front of you guys. <laughs> getting nervous in front of people like you guys that I see as great people in God, you know. Uh, and like Pastor Eric says, who am I? Who am I? A little guy from Compton, California, you know, I used to say a little fat guy from Compton, California, that the Lord has blessed and, and honored and uh, just grateful to be here. 
We're going to open up in prayer and then uh, we'll give the mic back to Pastor Eric. But Father, we bless you and we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. That you are Jehovah Nisi, the banner of our victory, Father. That you are Jehovah Jireh, Father, the God who provides our faith and provides a standard of life for every one of us. We come, Father, surrendered, spirit, soul, and body. We release every weight, Father, every sin, every hindrance, Father. We cast it to the side, Lord God. We cast it upon you because we know that you care for us and you love us. So, Father, I ask today that you would bless every man, Father, every woman here in this place, every child in this place. I, Father, I pray that they came with their hearts open, their ears open, Father, to hear the voice of God. For you said where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are. You are here, Father. And we're going to bless you. We're going to honor you. We're going to worship you, Father. We're going to exalt the name of Jesus. We're going to magnify the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to bless that name, Father. Hallelujah. We love you. We honor you. We bow our lives before you. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Move in the midst of your people. Hear their hearts. Hear their cry. Hear their jubilance, Father. Hear the joy that you have brought them, Father. I pray for those that are on their way, Lord God, that you're exciting their hearts. You're bringing them full of joy, Lord God. Bless us as we bless you, Father, and we bless one another. We thank you, Father, for this day, and we thank you for the word that will come forth. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. All right, Pastor Eric. Someone say hallelujah. 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 I, don't, I don't know about you, but I didn't grow up in the, I didn't grow up in a church where you could leave your seats and come and dance or wave a flag or anything. So when I'm in a place where that where you can do it, you best believe if I wasn't up here on this keyboard, I would be down here. So I'm just gonna invite you right now because the, the man, the head of this house just said, you can be yourself and you can get your praise on like you just don't care. You don't know how excited God gets when we dance like David, when we shout, when we blow a shofar, when we move our feet. Hallelujah. Let's do this.
Lord tonight. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on, the Lord. Thank you. 
From this side, and we're gonna you're gonna come, you're gonna dance in the river, and you're not you don't care what anybody thinks about you. Your your pride is gone. It's all for the Lord anyway. So come on, get a line right here. Get a line right here. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's a river. 
pressure up here. Come on. Come on. Get some freedom. Come on. Some of you, some of you are healed. Some of you are going to be healed right now. There's a river of healing right now. Come on. We come alive in the river. 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 There's nothing stop this joy. We're dancing in the street. whatever has clogged the river is being broken right now. And I'm telling you, the river is going to flow more than it ever has before. Amen. Because we're taking back. We're taking back that ground. I'm taking back ground. I'm taking back my children, my prodigals for the Lord. I'm taking back my finances. Back my joy. Hallelujah. Taking back my city. I'm taking back my nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Taking it back.
gonna roar, we're gonna roar like a lion. I'm gonna count to three, and we're gonna roar like a lion. But we're not gonna do it just a short one. We're gonna go for like at least a minute, okay, or two. And as we roar, as the Lion of Judah, the enemy will scatter. Because let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Amen? There's different churches represented here. There's different cities. So as you roar, this is for where your city's from, too. Not just from here. Amen? Because the tribe's coming together. The tribe is coming together to roar like a lion. Ready? One, two, three. Did you 
hear the sound? Did you hear that sound of the Lion of Judah when we roared? Amen. You hear the sound? There's a sound that breaks open the heavens. There's a sound that shakes the earth. There's a sound that makes dry bones live. Amen. There is a sound, there is a sound, a sound that breaks open the heavens. There is a sound, there is a sound, a sound that shakes the earth.
describe you. There is no one like you. God who was and is and is to come. Marvel at your wisdom beyond our comprehension. So powerful you are, the sovereign God. You are. coming with a new sound. And those that have an ear will hear what the Spirit of God is saying. God is calling. He's gathering the people. And we stand in awe. We lost our awe in God. He's amazing. He's I am. He's glorious. Just lift up your hand. Sing it one more time. Please. Yes. You are beyond amazing. You are beyond amazing. Oh. You are
Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He's amazing. There's no one like our God. There's no one like our God. He's alive. Our Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. He's ready to receive us. Oh, yeah. shame into glory. say this, I believe our Heavenly Father is well pleased with the praise and worship that came forth from the choir. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Wow. I ought to catch my composer. There's nothing better than Jesus. You know, I want to welcome everyone here, those that are on Facebook. Wish you were down here. There's powerful. There's a tangible anointing here tonight. But it was created because all of us had a heart to worship the King of King and Lord of Lords. My name is Eric Padilla. I'm the founder of Arise Men of God. This is the Arise Praise and Worship Team. (laughs) 
You see, Arise Men of God was started in 2018. Some of you may have heard it, but that's okay. But in 2018, God spoke to my sister-in-law and told me I needed to start a men's fellowship. Now, you have to understand, just have a home church with a handful of people. We don't have a, like it is, a turning point. I, I had a handful of people. One was my wife, my kids. And a Spanish lady who doesn't understand English would come, and she's been at, uh, uh, at our church for years. But I started a church, uh, excuse me, a Riseman of God. And the first year, 2018, I didn't have anything, okay? I had a friend, but what happened was the Lord spoke to me and said, do it. You know, you got to be obedient. When God gives you a mandate, you can't, like, question it. You just do it. So I turned around, and I rented a 500-room uh, banquet room. 500. I was expecting 500, right? <laughs> Yet I didn't have anything. And so I was talking to my son. And I said, hey, you know, because he works with equipment. So I'm like, okay, I need you to give me a deal so that I could get equipment for this men's conference. He goes, sure, Dad. When is it? I don't know. Where is it? I don't know. <laughs> but I knew that God was going to do something. So I rented this building, and it was not cheap. And, and Joshua... Was there? Mike Cousin was there. And we had a good worship team. We had about 120 men showed up, about 20 pastors. Now, come on, you get 20 pastors? I hardly knew. Showed up, which told me I was in the right place. And I, was, I didn't fast for 40 days and 40 nights. I just happened to bump in to what God wanted to do. And he'll use anyone. Hey, I'm an example. And so we had our first one, 120 men. We didn't meet our budget, but I didn't care. Because I said, we're sowing into men. Because I have a heart to see men grow. And then the next year, we went in the same place, same cost. A uh, less man showed about 90-something. Not a pastor showed, but I was still joyful. And then a friend of mine, an apostle friend of mine, he's sitting right there. Because I always, I'll talk to him, and he, he goes, hey, Pastor Eric. He goes, you know what? Uh, you need to do more. <laughs> Come on. You know, I'm thinking, more? I mean, I'm barely making it. You know, I don't have a budget, you know. But we did more. The next year we did Five conferences, different churches. If you could put on, Enrique, do you have the, the cities? Since then, five years ago, we have been over uh, about, there it is, the cities. Anaheim, Fresno, Sanger, Mer Merced, Covis, Fontana, Corona, Irvine, Hesperia, Santa Ana and Las Vegas. Yeah. I'm sharing that with you because if you're waiting to have more to do something for God, forget it. See, he'll use what you're willing to give. Like he told Moses, what's in your hand? And he used that. And my lovely wife, her and Irma, our Spanish saints, were the ones that interceded and prayed for the rise men of God. And God gave me, we're not a stationary men's ministry, we're a mobile men's ministry. Go all places. I haven't been up north of all the years. I've been saved over 41 years. Yeah, I'm 42 now, I'm only kidding. All the years, I have barely went up to Fresno, Colvis. You know, our we're said, I just never did. Now I travel up and down. And Apostle, <laughs> yeah, with, with Apostle AJ, we're at his church. And 
God's blessing, what, I'm, what am I trying to say? God will use you in a mighty way if you're willing to be used. See, a wise man of God is bigger than me. And, and I believe God's going to continue to, when I go be the Lord, God's going to continue to do a wise man of God. Because I've told some friends of mine, I go, when I go, I don't want, when I go somewhere, I don't want to say, oh, Pastor Eric's going to be here. No, I don't want that. I want him to say, a wise man of God is coming to our cities. Yeah. Because it's not about a man. Last year, we started something, and it's been pretty successful. We, we've asked the churches that we go to to sow in to the next event we have. Because I believe in sowing and reaping. Thank you for that one clap. Amen. You know, the man knows. I believe in sowing. And so we're going to receive an offering. Oh. Because you know what? Last church, we were in Merced, and they gave a rise men of God all the offering. They did take uh, uh, me, um, momentum with Apostle Rudy Sanchez, you know, said, well, at first when we were negotiating, talking about putting it together, two main men's major ministries, I was thinking, you know, I'm just going to give him the money, and, and we'll take care of it with our budget. Now we got some money in our account. And then he turned around and says, we're giving it all to you. So you see, when we receive an offering tonight, you're not sowing, I've already wrote the checks, you know, and, you know, I, I really, I, I, I do it by faith, and I, and I love, I, I wish I could give the speakers, and especially the worship team, lots and lots of money. But you know, they don't come for the money. They come to worship God. That's the difference. And so, amen, come on. This was powerful worship. And I'm humbled that they joined me. I'm overwhelmed to see you here and to see this worship team minister. But sowing, when you sow tonight, a rise man of God, you write out your checks, or your offering, we're going to be passing out our loaves. You're sowing to the people that were going to be in Corona in July 8th and 9th. You're sowing over there so that you can reap. So your family, your sons, your daughters, you know, can receive something. If you're lacking because you know of the inflation, the one thing you want to do is sow more. Because you see, you're trusting God's promises, not, not the administration promises, but God's promises. And if you sow, you're going to reap. I believe that. And I'm not going to, you know what, I'm not going to force you. We don't have ushers with guns. You know, what's in your wallet? What's, you know, that commercial, what's in your wallet? <laughs> but we, we're going to do that. Also, uh, with uh, Pastor Angel's uh, uh, permission, we're going to use, uh, if you want to, you can put your, your if you want to use a debit or credit card, you can put it in an envelope. But if you don't want to, can I have the phone number on there? If you would like to give, where's the uh, young people that always say this number? Okay. You see, thank you, because I always do it for Pastor Angel, and I get up here, and where are you? So one more time, young people, what's the number? <laughs> Aren't those kids awesome? They know the number to give. You know, Pastor Angel teaching them well. So if you would like to give, please give. As a, uh, If you need an offering envelope, please raise up your hand and take it. Don't forget, you're sowing. 
into our next conference July 8th and 9th. And then come up and you can bring it in. If you're, if you're, uh, hold on, my brothers. And then when I start singing, you back me up. When you, if you're giving it on the number, give it to guests, guests offering. Okay, not that you're guessing who, guests offering, okay? You can put it on there and let's all give something. Because I'm telling you, Corona is going to be blessed because you are providing the finances for that. Flowing. Praise God. Apostle AJ, would you mind praying for the offering, please? There's a mic right there. Amen. Would you guys stretch your hands to the seat tonight? Just know that it may leave your bank account, but it doesn't leave your life. Amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you tonight for seed that comes from the sower, Lord, that you always provide above and beyond any expectation. We thank you, Lord, that this seed is a seed of enlargement and a seed, Father, that will go 
way beyond what we see with our natural eyes. From city to city, from state to state, Father, let this seed multiply. Let it take dominion. Let it have authority over every work of poverty, debt, and lack because of the power of the kingdom seed in Jesus' mighty and holy name. And everybody says amen. amen. Come on, somebody bless the Lord. Uh, Ryan, praise God. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, as you see the flyer up there, we got uh, F. I will be opening up and ministering the word. Uh, then uh, Prophet Steve Davis. And then tomorrow, Apostle AJ. Amen. And my, my nephew uh, came in. He's, he's trying to be humble. He's way in the back. But John Guzman, will you stand up? I was with him for years. Uh, there's a reason why I have it over here. I just want to open, you know. But God's getting ready. We want to thank the worship team as they go in. <laughs> Praise God. If you have your Bibles, and hopefully you do, turn to Philippians 3.13. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming out. I believe that God's going to meet you where you're at tonight because he's already done something. The atmosphere is saturated with the presence of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You know, and uh, uh, <clears throat> Prophet Steve and, and Rosemary, his wife, just came from Tennessee yesterday, right? They arrived. So if uh, he starts falling asleep, just throw something at him, you know. <laughs> I've known... See, for years, he's a mighty man of God. I appreciate him. But it says in Philippians 3.13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to break that down, but I want to, as I was studying, I was preparing something, and, and, and it's in Spain in the 15th century, they used to have on their coins, and uh, if they could put it up, it's, it says, A, ne, plus, atra. That's the English version. It's really written in Latin. And what it meant on their coins was, there's nothing beyond. There's no more. And as I was meditating on this, I think there's some Christians that think there's no more. I think there's some Christians that said there's nothing beyond what I have. And so many are, oh, these are the last days. We better get ready. My opinion, and which is not a lot, but my opinion is that the last days was when Jesus said, receive my spirit. It started the last days there, people. And if you're looking at the news and you're wondering, you know, and if fear comes in and you're saying, there's nothing left, what can God do? Let me tell you something. Once they found Columbus, and we're not going to get into a history thing, okay? But I'm, I'm just curious. Columbus, what three ships did he sail on? Who can tell me? Oh, you studied with me. Come on now. <laughs> but they found out there was more because they thought it was like the edge of the earth, and that's it. You're going to die. There's nothing more to conquer. And see, as Christians, we can get that way. We can say there's nothing left. I mean, I've done it all. And even some ministers. Now, I don't know a lot of ministers, and the quality that I have in front is, is awesome. But you could come to a place in your church as ministers and say, I've achieved it. Look at what I have. People, money, cars, planes. I could give the word and then go play golf after. God is not looking 
for a church that's comfortable. He's not looking for a people that's comfortable. Hi, Jackie. You made it, all right. He's looking for a church that's willing to press on, to go forth in spite of what's happening. So they changed it. And they changed it to plus atra, which means further beyond and more beyond. Isn't that powerful? They shift it because they realize there is more beyond. There's something that God has that he hasn't even done on this earth. We look at the Bible and we say, oh, he's done everything. Has he saved all your family yet? No. See, I don't like to say God has many tricks under his sleeve. I don't like to say that, but... There are so many miracles yet to happen for a people that want God to see God move. And I was meditating on this. I was thinking, well, maybe no one here, okay? Maybe not on Facebook, but maybe they can see the recording and, and pass it on. But there's, as I said, there are some people who think there is no more. What can God do to my, for my situation? What is God going to do that I haven't seen? Ministers, what can I preach? I preached everything from Genesis to Revelations. Or it's like some people say, from the contents, you know, to the maps in the Bible, right? They preached everything, and that's not true because there's still fresh revelation that God is imparting to his people, to his ministers. And I know this. As I've been traveling around, I've been blessed. Why? Because I've seen men's ministries rise up left and right. In 2018, I couldn't find a men's ministry. There was nowhere to be found. I had to actually go up to Victorville and and go to a men's fellowship. That's how desperate I was. Because there was nothing here. In fact, the following couple of years, major denominations canceled their men's ministry. And I'm thinking, what are they doing? Are they saying it costs too much? Our men don't need to do that? But praise God, even during the, the, that craziness, pandemic, a rise man of God still went out and ministered. Because I figure if God's going to take me, he's going to take me. Man could do what they want and threaten me. In fact, one time we were in, it's in Fontana at Mike's church, and I talked to my brother-in-law, my son-in-law, and then he talked to his brother who's a sheriff. And he said, tell Pastor Eric not to go because they will arrest him, they'll find him, and, you know, and, you know throw him in jail. And to be honest with you, I was like, maybe I should pray about this, you know. I don't have money for a fine, and I don't want to go to jail. But if I had to, I did. And, but we, you know what? We still kept it. We kept that. Why? Because I believe trusted God more than I trusted the this, this, uh, this cops and, and, and praise God for the police, but I trusted God more. Because there's something beyond. There's more for us than what we even have experienced. There's more. I'm telling you, there's more for you than what you have experienced already. You should be excited. You know, little chill. Sometimes people, I'm not mocking. I I do that too. But, you know, you, you get a little chill of God's presence and you think that's it. Oh, no, no, no. There's so much. He's so amazing. And he shows up every time we need him. Maybe not at the times we want, but he shows up. So what did Spain do? Praise God that they had enough guts to change their money and say there's more beyond. If, you, if anything tonight, besides, just on my message, not the uh, prophet, on my message, if anything you take tonight, it's there's more beyond. 
There's much more. There's much, much, much more that God has in store for his people. I'm telling you, the Bible says that the enemy comes in like a flood, but he raises a standard. See, we are the standard. We're going to stand and we're going to stop and say, enemy, you cannot touch us anymore. Like the song said, we're, like Joshua was saying, take back. Take back our finances. Take back our family. Take back our life. Take back our joy. Unless you want the enemy to keep him. But Paul knew that he didn't apprehend anything. He wasn't perfect. There were so many things he still had to learn. But I like this, and where he said, but this one thing I do. A few years ago, we were practicing in Fontana. You know, and I've been in the ministry over 41 years, something like that. Been, we'll be married 40 years. So I went to a higher level of ministry when I got married. <laughs> and I did all kinds of things. I was a mime, believe it or not. <laughs> I was a dancer with flags. One day I'll show Turning Point, one of those pictures. I had a silk shirt, purple, you know. But it's only for turning point because you're my family now, so I just see it, you know. But I did all kinds of things. I ministered. I, you know, I mean, there was everything that you could do in ministry that I did. Then when we started a rice man of God, <coughs> um, Brother Joshua said, you know what? The Lord wants me to tell you this. The one thing you have to do is arise, men of God. The one thing, this doesn't mean I'm stopping other things. I'm not stopping eating, you know. <laughs> I should. <laughs> but the one thing, and so God's going to ask you, is asking you tonight, what's the one thing God really wants you to do? Because we can get caught up in all kinds of things, especially as ministers, Christians that are, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And God says, wait, 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 wait. You could do that, but I want, there's one thing that you have. You see, we have a destiny and purpose to fulfill. And if I could read it, if I could say it this way, it's like this. Josh, uh, Joseph, his destiny was to be second command in Egypt. That's what his destiny was. He thought, I, uh, for me, I thought when I was, a, if I was him, I thought at Potiphar's house, he had everything he needed. This must be it. This must, because hey, yeah, I had everything, he, Joseph's probably saying, but yet he didn't. But that was his destiny, but his purpose was what? To provide for his family. Yep. So see, you have a destiny, but what is your purpose in that destiny? Oh, I want to be a singer. Well, why do you want to be a singer? Why do you want to be a football player? Why do you want to do these things? Because guess what? You have a destiny. What's the one thing out of everything that God wants you to do? And it, and it could be just loving one another. You know, you don't have to be part of the five-fold ministry. Because let me tell you, it's not that great sometimes. <laughs> right? It's not that great sometimes. Because you go through a lot. You know when David Smith wanted to stone him? Sometimes congregations could get like that. Pastor, I don't like the message you said today. You were very mean. You were talking about me. <laughs> I wasn't. I was just sharing the word. But maybe he just called you at your work to influence the co your co-workers. Maybe just that. And you're saying, well, I want to be a pastor. Ah, why don't you just do what God called you to do at your job? Right. <laughs> Young people, I love, you know what, Pastor Angel knows this. I love these youth people, these young people. They're awesome. But young people, why don't you just do what God wants you to do at your school? Yep. 
and start turning it around. And start standing up. I know there was this, a young lady who stood up and said, I'm not going to wear the mask anymore. And she got sent home. Praise God that you can have young people to say enough is enough. Amen? But one thing, let us not, because the one thing is that the objective that we have should always be in view and not to let anything interfere with that. The one thing. He goes on to say, forgetting those things that are behind, those things that can't distract us, whether they be good or bad things, looking at what is in the past often keeps us what God has for us in the future. If you keep on looking at the past, even the good things, oh, I did this, I did that, I did this for the kingdom, and God says, let it alone. Let it alone. Focus. Did anyone besides myself ever run track? AJ, okay, we're going to have a race after in the parking lot. <laughs> it's okay. We're racing against Bert. <laughs> but, you know, when you start going to the past and thinking all those the bad things, how many, you know, don't raise your hand, but <laughs> besides myself, sometimes I, I get in those crazy ideas and things, I know where it came from, of, of, of things that I didn't do right. You know, I've been up ministering in the public for years, and, I, and I'm not very allocated. See, I can't even, I, 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 I love. <laughs> I'm not very good with words. But somehow, God gets through to me. And sometimes, you know, I can look at myself, I don't want to go up. Look who's in front of me right now, you know. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I could look at all the times that I did something or said something wrong behind the pulpit and say, you know what, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to look foolish I don't want people talking talk to about me. I'm not much educated, I, you know, or something like that. But you know what? I depend on God's anointing. Because if I just say Jesus, that's enough. But not to look behind. When you're running, those, come on, young people, you don't ever run track? Okay, you have. Jesse? Huh? Jesus. He, ran, he runs track, or he ran track. When you're running track, oh, that's right. I got to get down here. Thank you. I usually give these out, and so I'm going to give one. Because I don't know if I ever gave one to Pastor Angel. Did I ever give you a? Huh? Okay, well, come up there. Okay, now... Uh, Bert and H.A., you're the other team. <laughs> Here's what it is. And as, as God, <laughs> they all went right. We won't be on bad knees, you know. <laughs> but depending on God, to heal us. Yeah. But you know what? When you're running, a runner does not look back. See, Paul was talking about running a race. That's right. And you can't look back at the good things or the bad things. you got to keep looking at the mark. And, and you got to keep on running and focusing. You can't look at your competition. Right. And, you know, we're not in here to compete with one another. Yeah. We're in here to complement right. one another, you know. Yeah. And so, I'm, uh, so as I was meditating on this message, I go, well, you know what? I remember when I used to run track. Now, I was a little slimmer. No, actually, a lot slimmer. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> but the one thing I didn't, I didn't have a start. Every time I started, everyone was in front of me. But what I did have was a kick. And I ran the sprints. And so anyway, when a runner's running, they're not looking back. They're looking forward. And if you're running, if you're running a relay race, you're running with everything you have. And see, we're in a relay race. And, and there's a couple of things that you need to understand. You need to stay 
in your lane. You can't get out here because, no, I'm not going to say it. Um, but you can't get out, you're, you, you know, you're, you have one title and then you get over here in another title. And you know, you're not supposed to be in this lane. You're disqualifying yourself for what God wants to do in your life. You get disqualified, and I don't care if you, if you finish first. You're disqualified because you went in the wrong lane. That's the word. We need to understand, people, we need to stay in our lane. Whatever God has for you, the one thing God has, stay in your lane and finish it. But the one thing that we have to do is that, see, I believe a rise man of God is going to continue on when I go to heaven. But I'm looking, I'm looking to see who's going to take it. I'm not, I'm not that Pastor Angelus because he's my friend and he has been of a higher standard. But I know that God has someone that will take a rise man of God and run with it, have the passion, have the vision, and the sacrifice to keep it going. Amen. Because it's not about me, it's about God, what God wants to do for you, yes. man. Yes. So the, runner, the runner's running. You can turn that way. Don't worry, I won't hit you. And so the runner, so, the, so he has to stay focused. He can't be looking back, nope. you know, trying to pass on. You, he doesn't do that. So what he does is that he's focusing, and, and reach your hand back. Yeah, like that. And he's focusing, and he's running, and he's running, and he has to make sure he gives it away. Thank you. Let's give the Pastor Angel a hand. I'm finishing up because I want the prophet to come up, but God has so much for us. And I see God raising up men. I love it when I see, even if they're having a men's breakfast at the same time, we're having a men's breakfast. I don't care. There's so many men around, but God's raising up men to take the rightful place. And I'm, I get excited. I don't feel, oh, well, they're going to take my men there. They're, they're missing up on my, you know, on my stuff. No, I'm excited when I see other ministries, other churches having men's meetings and, and getting ready. And in fact, one of the ministries started their men's fellowship again, right, Alfred? They started, the, started their men's fellowship again. God is raising men. He's raising you up. And if you, Danny, if you thought you saw something, you get, guess what, man? You're going to see more that God's going to do in your life. There's so much more. What did Spain do? At first they said, there's no more, Josh. There's no more. There's, there's nothing we can conquer. There's nothing we can learn. There's nothing we can do extra because God is limited. And God's saying, get out of that box. That's right. Come on, Pastor. Get out of the box and don't do church like you used to do church, but do something different. My wife and I would, were talking about, I'm ending, this is my second ending. I have five that I go, so count them. Better. <laughs> but, what did you say, Pastor? <laughs> God is doing something. And he's raising up men. He's raising up a remnant. He's raising up a remnant. And I, here's what I believe about, like, Gideon. There's only 300. But God is raising up a remnant. But it's not to say, oh, I'm part of the remnant. Ooh, I'm chosen. Ryan, they chose me. I'm part of the remnant. No, no, no. The remnant is to increase. The remnant is to move and, and go into the places to, re, uh, to start revival in such a way, a fresh fire of the Holy Ghost to come down. That's why God's raising up a remnant so that a fresh fire of the Spirit of God will come down and move upon the people. Are you ready? Okay, it's my third ending. I'm only kidding. But he reached for those things that were before him. Start reaching. Start reaching in prayer. I, you know, if you feel like blah, because sometimes Christians can feel blah, 
I like what Leviticus says. It's really in the Bible, by the way. It says that the fire on the altar will not go out. It may grow a little dim, but it will not go out. And God is releasing a new sound and a fresh fire upon his people. So let's give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Amen. Well, let's all stand up as we greet Prophet Steve Davis. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. Love this man. Where'd Josh go? Hey, Josh, it's been a while, my friend. Love you. But top and rising. Come on. You got some more songs in you, too. You're going beyond. I'm telling you, there's a new sound coming from heaven. This guy's going to be one of the writers for it. I just released that anointing, Lord. The apostolic anointing, and it's a governmental sound too. It will shift government stuff too, not just not just the church. It's time to shift governments, especially here in California. So I release that shifting anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I want my wife to come up. This is my beautiful bride, Rosemary. She has a word for the pastor. Hallelujah. Pastor Angel. Uh, I, as I was sitting, I heard the Lord say, son, <laughs> you call your turning point. The turning point has come. The Lord says, I've taken you out of Egypt. I brought you through the wilderness. And now it's time for you to go. And I've even taken you through the Red Sea. And you've watched the miraculous. And you've watched David's, uh, the, David's uh, uh, busted, disgusted, uh, depressed. I, the, the Lord said, I send you this group of people because I called you to raise an army. Because now I'm taking you into your Canaan land. And now I'm saying it's fight. You said you like to fight. <laughs> the, the, and it's going to be fight, fight, fight. All the way through. God says, because I called you to take off the heads of every Goliath. I called you and Turning Point, and this is for every member of Turning Point, because what comes on the head comes on the body. I've called you to take off the head of the enemy and to even cause a shifting in that, that's here. I heard the Lord, I actually saw the earth quake. And the Lord said, you've gone through a shaking. You've gone through a quaking. And the Lord says, innocent. He calls you innocent. You went through the shaking and it, and it, and it seemed like your, your world, your earth, the ground you were standing on just split open. But God said, but the enemy meant for evil. I'm turning around. And where it split, God said, I'm building a new foundation because the work I called you to must go deep so that it can go high. So the Lord says, son, build my army. Build my army because you're called to build that army to take down the Goliath, to take down even Jezebel that has been in this state. But God says, I've given you the city, son. And you, I, you are a sent one to bring change to this city and even to the state, says the Lord. And Sandra, I heard the Lord say, I put a prophetic mantle on you. I made you tough. <laughs> I made you always. I made you want to go after. You know, you're the one. Oh, you can't do that. And you have to watch me in, inside of you. And God said, yeah, every time you say, watch me, when the enemy comes and, and says, no, you can't. You're just going to say, watch me. Because the Lord said, I called you to be a woman who walks in authority. I've called you to be a, an easer. I've given you a sword. The, says the Lord, are you married? 
And that sword, the easer, protects her husband. She protects his because you're that. And the Lord says, you're going to help raise up the warriors in this house. And the Lord says, I send you out to the battle. But the Lord says, you're not fighting alone. The Lord says, I'm going to fight with you and I'm through you. I'm sending you, daughter, to root up. I'm sending you to pull it up and tear it down. I'm sending a uh, turning point to build up. And the, oh, and I, I just heard the Lord say, yeast. I'm pouring more yeast in this body. Because, it's, you know, when you put the yeast in it, and, and that, and you're going to be yeast in this city. You're going to be yeast, and, and the Lord says, and the salt. You're going to bring preservation to the life of many people in this city. Hallelujah. Come on. Sound like a turnaround for turning point. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many rather be here than the best hospital in the world? <laughs> Come on. Well, I've almost lived in a hospital. You go ahead and have a seat. Hallelujah. God is moving. And I don't know what your expectation is, but mine's through the roof. And we got to, you know, sometimes some of us just have to change thinking, thinking. But I say I always have to have gratitude in your attitude because your attitude determines your altitude. And if you're always thankful, then you can't go over. You can't go over without going higher and higher and higher. And I want to tell you, men... We need to shift. We need to move into all that God has for us. I'm telling you, some of the ladies already know how to get in there and discern some things. Some, some men, we just go like, hello. <laughs> but I'm glad I got a woman on my side that's a warrior. I'm going to tell you, she had to fight the spirit of death. Ten years ago, I got a liver transplant. I just tell everybody I've been delivered and relivered. But, <laughs> but I'm a liver, not a dyer. Okay, but doctors wanted to send me home to die. She said, no, I'm taking my organ to get a new liver. So glory to God and to hell with the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. So anyhow, Father, we just want to honor you. We're here to honor you. That's our greatest thing we could do in every area of our life. So you said you honor those who honor you. And I thank you for all who are here tonight. I honor each one of you for being here because there's a reason you're here, and that's to give God glory and honor and praise. And you know what? I'm going to tell you, there's no big I or little you in the kingdom of God. There's only one big deal. His name is Jesus. And God sent him for each one of us. He had a plan. What is this? What, what does the, the theme say? Willing to count the cost? Jesus knew the cost before he came. What would it profit you if you gained the whole world and lose your soul? God's saying your soul is more important to him than the whole world. That's how much value God puts on us. Sometimes we just see who we used to be. No, that ain't who God called us to be. So I, you know, I titled this message like Kingdom Come. You know there's a prayer like that, you know. But that wasn't the Lord's Prayer. Everybody said that's the Lord's Prayer. But no, it was the disciples asking how should we pray. And God went... The Lord won't tell us to pray thy kingdom come if it can't happen here. Come on, why would he tell us that? So this is called thy kingdom come, but like he said, if you honor God, he said, I honor those who honor me. And if you're in this house tonight, it's because you came to honor God. Not because you came to hear someone speak. But I pray the message gets in your spirit, in your heart. So I want to encourage you today, although there's a lot of crazy stuff going on, and we are in perilous times in the world. Uh, but the church is raising up in power and authority. Because Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, he's not telling Peter he's a, on the rock of Peter. Peter got a revelation. Who do men say that I am? Well, some say you're a prophet. Some say you're a good teacher. Some say you're this. Some say, okay, but who do you 
say that I am. And Peter, he said, you are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. He said, guess what? You didn't get that from your own stinking thinking. You got a revelation from heaven. And when you get a revelation who Jesus is, you ain't never going back to the old stuff. You ain't never going backwards. See, he got a revelation, and he said, on the rock of Christ Jesus, on the revelation of who Jesus is, I'm going to build my ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So if the gates of hell prevail against you, you better kick it out. If the enemy's talking to your head, he's out of place. He belongs under your feet. But that's where the battleground is in your mind. But anyhow, let me go on. When, you know, I always like to say, I, I, I do a lot of funny things too. But, you know, Jesus, don't, the devil don't have no feet. He don't have no legs. He can't be everywhere like God. He's only in one place. I said the devil don't have no legs because he's been defeated. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Jesus said in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Everybody goes through some troubles even as a believer. He said, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. We are called to be overcomers. That means there have to be some things overcome. We're called to be more than conquerors. That means we're supposed to conquer some things. And then, you know, you can't be more than a conqueror if there's not something to conquer. You can't always triumph in Christ unless there's something to triumph over. You're going to go through things. But when you're going through hell, don't stop. Don't camp out. Don't pitch a tent. Just keep going. You'll get through it. You'll make it to the other side. But some people just got a mentality, Armageddon out of here. I got to get out of here. But Jesus said, we are to occupy until he comes. We are to be an occupational force. We're, let, we're letting the enemy occupy. We say, no, rise up, church. Take your rightful place. Huh. We are called to be like Jesus and be overcomers. Jesus, in Revelation 12, 11, it says, and says what? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Most people stop right there. But the next part says, and they loved not their lives even unto death. So to me, it's a win-win situation. For me to live as Christ, to die as gain. I win. You know, and like I said, Eric, if they would arrest you, you just start a prison ministry. <laughs> Might as well go with it, Right? I mean, be a Paul and Silas, just praise God. God will open. If you're in any kind of prison, right now the prison's in your mind. Because a lot of people in prison think they're free. A prison in their minds. The only one that's going to really set you free is Jesus. So he, so he said, they overcame him. Who's him? The stinking devil. By the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. What is the word of your testimony? What are you testifying of? What's coming out of your mouth? In the Hebrew, this is the, this is the decade, the year and the decade of the pay, which means the decade of the mouth. And the Bible says you can have what you say. I say I'm blessed when I come in. I'm blessed when I go out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. Everything I put in my hand to do prospers. I love when you take the offering. I cheer. Because giving is not a debt you owe. It's a seed you sow. And God will supernaturally make it grow. So I like to give everywhere I go. And I'm trying to outgive God, but it is not working. And I'm loving it. <laughs> People say, I don't give to get. I say, I do because I can give more. Come on, if I don't have more, I can't get. And you can't be blessed unless you have something. I remember years ago when we started, I said, listen, if you don't have something to give God, take a, sh a button off your shirt and put an offering. God will honor what you give him. I was surprised. I did find a button the offering. You know what though? That touched me more than all the money. Because people saying, I need something. God work with this. You know, if you give God something, he'll give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running all over the place to give back to you. So, and, and it's funny, Pastor Eric started mentioning Philippians. I said, he's still in my message. No, no we're all on the same page here. Hallelujah. And Philippians 1.21 says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. 
So either way we win and God gets all the glory. What's the, you know, people are going, oh, COVID, COVID, I'm going to die of COVID. I'm gonna. I said, where are you going to go if you die of COVID? That's the big question. <laughs> you know, and I was telling everybody like, like Saul before he became Paul, I'm on the road to Damascus. <laughs> Come on. And then my sister-in-law bought my wife and her shirt says, fully vaccinated by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> so the key to breakthrough in 2022 is to have an intimate relationship with the Lord. That's the key. God wants to communicate with his people on a daily basis. People say, but I don't hear God. And I like to say, but he's talking all the time. Yeah. Come on. Open this up. He's talking. Someone said, I don't understand the Bible when I read it. I said, do you understand nutrients when you, when you eat where they go in your body? No, you just know you're hungry. Your spirit man is hungry. And the more you put it in, the more it's going to change you. Come on, the more you renew your mind. But you got to put it in. If you don't put it in, you can't inherit what's yours. And God gave it all for you. You know, the Bible says we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. What's his is ours. But he won't give it to us if we don't handle it right. So Jesus' prayer in John 17. Now that's the prayer. That's the Lord's prayer. John 17. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you have given me. For they are yours. And all mine are yours and yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. How many want God to be glorified in you? Come on. But, but God doesn't give his glory to any man. No, no. God doesn't just give his glory to any man. He gives it to his men and women. We'll, we'll find out that. Let me, so let me, keep pray, let me keep reading this. I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep them through your name, those you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. I so want to be one with God. But how does that happen? Spending time in his presence. I like to say God wants intimacy. And I break that down. I say, want, I want you into me. See? That's the key. Let me tell you, the key is knowing God. You know, we all give our lives to Jesus, but do we have a relationship? Come on. Let me, let me go on. I, I, keep, I just go on off on a tangent here. Help me, Lord. So, he said, I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. How many, how many are still in the world? No space aliens here, by the way? Okay. 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 Um, but he says, Holy Father, keep them through your name, those you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. In verse 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. I'm not get, I'm getting out of here, right? I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. In other words, set them apart by your truth. Your word is truth. You, as you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. I send Eric in to start a ride. That's his job. He's doing it. And God's his boss, so he'll pay him. Good. Hallelujah. He said, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Jesus saying, I set myself apart for you. And he says, that they also may be set apart. See, we're supposed to be set apart from the world. We're not supposed to act like the world. We're supposed to make a difference in the world. Not join the world. You know, and so let me go on. Because, man, I'll tell you. He says, I do not pray, but those who will believe in me through their word. How many know? You hear someone preach, you got to, if they're speaking this, get in it. Know what you believe. Know why you believe it. You know, I tell people, I don't know if some of you older ones will know. I say, you don't know if my last name is not Jones and I got Kool-Aid in the back. <laughs> there was a guy named Jim Jones killed a lot of people. I'm, they followed him. Because they didn't know this. Okay. So, he said, Father, that they may be one. As you, Father, in me and I in you. What's it going to be like for us? I mean, I want that so much that they don't see me. They don't see AJ. They don't see Angel. They see Jesus. That's what we want. We want people to see Jesus. You meet me and forget about me. That's no big deal. You meet Jesus, forget about him. You're in trouble. Hallelujah. So he said, and the glory that you gave me, I give it to them. 
wait, wait. God doesn't give his glory to any man. Well, he, Jesus just said, the glory you gave me, I will give it to him. For why? That the world will know that you sent me. Whew. And that they may be one just as we are. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me and have loved them as you love me. Wait a minute. How much does the Father love Jesus? Come on. Jesus gave his all. God gave his best. How can I give anything less? I can't. I can't. Jesus died for me. All I want to do is live for him. And if you get this inside of you, you will never be the same. Never be the same. Everything Jesus did was what he saw Father doing. And he only said what his Father told him to say. In John 12, 49, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command that I should say what I should say and what I should speak. How many know we have to tune in? What are you saying, God? What are you saying? And how can I say it? You know, my wife had to tune in, and then she had to step out in faith and give Pastor Angel the word. And that's what the prophetic is. You know, you want to know prophetic? It's all right here. But God wants to communicate with his people. So he uses pastors. He uses evangelists. He uses teachers. He can even use a child. Come on. And sometimes children have more faith than adults. My son who will be 25 this year started prophesying at six years old. There ain't no junior Holy Spirit. Come on, kids can hear from God just like an adult can. Sometimes I think kids hear bitter. And he said, if you, unless you become like a child, you'll know I entered the kingdom. Come on, we have to have that childlike faith. If, I, if, if AJ's my daddy, he says, jump. If God says jump, what do we do? I want to tell you, the head says no, but the spirit says go. Who are you going to be? Come on, your head's going to get you in a lot of trouble. Spirit man. That's why we need to tune in. Holy Spirit, tune us in every day. Whew. Now, we must hear, see, what is it? God spoke, Jesus spoke, now what? Now we must hear what the Spirit is saying to us, the church. Church, we are not in church. We are the church. The church is not a building. The church is where you come to learn and then be the church outside. One of my problems is the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not with observation. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. My problem is getting what's in you to manifest outside of you everywhere you go. Because the world is waiting for the real deal. I don't want to go to boring church services. I want to see the power of God. I want to see a demonstration. God is raising up a demonstration generation. Okay, let's, re let's read Isaiah 60, 1 through 7. He said, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I believe we're in this time right now. He said, For darkness, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness of people. Hello, look around. Is there a lot of darkness out there right now? But he said, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. So I said, when everything's in black and white, we're going to be in living color. When everybody's looking down, we're going to be looking up. They're going to say, what is different about you? And we're going to give them Jesus. He said, the Gentiles shall come to your light, kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar. The prodigals are coming home. Your daughters will be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant. Come on. How many want to glow in the dark? Come on. Now you shall see and become radiant. And your heart shall swell with joy. Because of the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. Seas represent people. Abundance of people are going to be turned to you. Look at right now. Government's not the answer. Come on, jobs are not the answer. They're running out of food. That's okay. I always read the story about Elijah. 
when he had to go hide to the brook, and, and they said the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat at night. Where did he get the bread and meat? I think from King Ahab's house. So if God has to take it to the pres from the president's house and bring it to us, he will. I, you know, I'm not, if gas goes to $100, I don't care. They're not my source. See, I'm of a kingdom where there's a king is so good, and we're not just servants of the king. We are family. We are family. And see, the problem, I say, it's not a, a skin problem, it's a sin problem. It's not about race, it's about grace. There's only one race. It's called a human race. We all different ethnicities, which to me is like a beautiful bouquet of flowers. And, and you know, I, wanna, I love you right where you're at. I don't care about what, and because God doesn't look on the outward appearance, he looks at the heart. And if we're going to be anything like our father, we got to see people after the, after the spirit, after the heart. Not know me, I, I said if you know me after the flesh, I stink, just like everybody else. My wife will tell you. <laughs> Let me go on. Your heart shall swell because the abundance of seed shall be turned to you. The, the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. How many are ready for some transference of wealth? But you got to be obedient in your giving. <laughs> you know, and giving is not just money. Give love, you're going to reap love. Come on. If you want friends, you got to show yourself friendly. What do you want? You want health? Might have to do some healthy things. Help me, Jesus. I love ice cream. <laughs> Come on. Let me go on. But at the end of that, on verse 7, it says, And I will glorify the house of my glory. Where's the house? You're the house. Where's the ark? You're the ark. You carry the presence of God. Your hands are anointed to heal the sick. Come on. You can cast out devils. The Bible says these signs will follow those who believe. And one of them is they will speak in new tongues. And if people don't like that, talk it over with Jesus because he baptized me. Let me go on. Hallelujah. So, Jesus said in, eight, in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And then in Matthew 5, 4, 5 14 through 16, it says, you are the light of the world. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Now he says, you are the light of the world. That doesn't mean I'm going to light up the whole world. I'm going to light up my sphere of influence. You're going to light up your sphere. You're going to light up your sphere. Everybody has a sphere of influence. So, uh, it says in Matthew 5.14, you are the light of the world. A city that's on a hill cannot be hidden. This church is not going to be hidden. This house will not be hidden. It will be a lighthouse. Nor will they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. It gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, so they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Why are we going to do good works? To glorify our Father in heaven. But if we turn off all the lights in here, it would be a, a dark building. But if one person lights a candle, you can see my face. But guess what? If we all light candles, the whole room will light up. And what happens to the darkness? Has to go. Has no choice. Has to leave. And, and in Luke eleven thirty six, if you are filled with light with no dark areas, then your whole, li whole life will be radiant as though a floodlight were filling you with light. How many want to be so full of light? Come on. No dark areas. No, let's try to see things try to creep in. No, no. Cast them out. Get rid of them. So the whole purpose of the church is to reflect Jesus Christ and be conformed to his image. It's not to be the greatest prophet, greatest apostle, greatest pastor, biggest church. It's to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. That's the greatest calling you could ever have. In Romans 8, 28 and 29. And we know, do we know? All things work together for good to those who love God. He didn't say all things are good. He said we know that all things will work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined.
to be conformed into the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Come on, many. You're all family. But Jesus is the firstborn. Come on, Jesus is our big brother. He's our savior. He's our healer. He came to be obedient to the Father. And that's all he's wanting us to be, obedient. I like this, they call it the kiss principle, but you know some people call it different things, but I say keep it simple, saints. Jesus never made anything difficult. You know who made it difficult? Religious people and politicians, some things have not changed. It was the religious guys wanting to kill Jesus all the time because it was going to make them look bad. I don't care about looking bad. I'm a fool for Jesus. Who fool are you? <laughs> okay, no fools in here. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, they do have an atheist holiday. Yeah, April 1st. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, it comes through having, but you know, if we want to be conformed in the image to Christ, we have to know him. We have to spend time in his presence. We got to talk to him. And then sometimes, you know what people pray? God, bless me. Bless my house. Bless my family. Bless us four and no more. You know, that's, that's you know, I want to be blessed, blessed, blessed. And God says, okay, I want to do this, this, and this, and this. But you just asked for things, and you said thank you and walked out, and you didn't stop and listen to what I want to say. Because I can't give you that until you're obedient to this. You know, the, the, if you read the Bible, God, there's so many promises. And all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. You know, I, as a matter of fact, say, say I was a multimillionaire, and I gave everything to Eric. That would make Eric happy. No, but he has used it for the kingdom. I know his heart is. But if I gave it to him in my will, it's rightfully his. But he can still die poor if he has never read the will. I want to tell you, there's thousands of promises for you to inherit, but you have to know the will. And if you don't know the will, you can't inherit the promises. The Bible says we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. How do you know what your promise is? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved and your house. That's a promise. All right, so, uh, so are we standing on the promises or just sitting on the premises? Come on. I said, are we standing on the promises or sitting on the premises? You know, hey, don't be just sitting on your blessed assurance. Get up and do something. You know, I used to say, for do nothings, God does nothing. Come on. Do you believe the Bible? Yes. Okay, he said, Jesus said, these signs will follow them and believe. In my name they'll cast out demons. When's the last time you cast out a demon? Ah! Come on. You have the power. You have the authority. He said, in my name they'll speak in new tongues. Oh, we don't believe in that tongue stuff. I used to have a prophet friend. They said, tongues is of the devil. He said, if tongues is of the devil, how come you didn't speak in tongues when you was of the devil? I might have slurred my speech, but it wasn't tongues. <laughs> Jesus said, these, the, the last thing Jesus said, according to the book of Mark, is believers will lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Come on, your hands are anointed. When are you going to start practicing? You might as well try. What do you got to lose? Only two things can happen. They get healed or they don't get healed. And if they don't, keep practicing. Because you keep doing it until you believe it. Come on. We say we believe it, but then we don't practice it. I'm nobody special, but I laid hands on a blind person and they got healed their eyes. Deaf ears open. My wife would pray for someone with deaf ears and they got healed by the power of God. That person starts screaming. Hey, you would scream too if you never heard yourself before. You know, because God is a God of miracles. That's why I said I don't want to go to a boring church service. I want to see a demonstration of the spirit and of power. Paul said, my speech and my preaching words weren't with enticing words of human wisdom, but a demonstration of the spirit and power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. If you look out there, the wisdom of man is what God is all in this mess right now, because they turned their back on God. But I want to tell you, God is not done. As Pastor Eric would say, God just getting started. Now, I'm telling you, we're going to see a move of God that's greater than all of the other ones put together. In the midst of the greatest darkness, two things are happening at the same time. 
Okay. Wow. I like to say this a lot. You can't walk backwards into the future. There's no place to go. You know, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Guess what? Yesterday's an old thing. It can't change yesterday. But you can make quality day today. You may be here tomorrow, you make a quality day tomorrow. You know, you can make, you gotta, but you got to wake up making the decision. Man, I, I wake every day up every day and say, well, Lord, but this is the day that you have made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Not be sad, not be mad, not be bad, not be had. I'm going to be glad. And because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips are going to praise you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to lift up my hands to your name. Oh, we don't lift up hands in church. Well, you're trying to please man. If you still try to please man, you can't please God. I like to be happy. I like to have joy. But I'm not going to try to please nobody. Except the Lord. Because guess what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. You know what that means? When you give him joy, he gives you strength. Come on. When Josh is worshiping, we get into the present. He's, God is enjoying our worship. And some people say, I don't like the worship. Hey, it's not for you. It's for him. I tell you, if you go to a lot of different places, different churches, I go to a country church, man, they, they sing in the same song with a twang. But I could still enter his presence. I can go to a predominantly African-American church and I can get in there with them too. Why? Because I want to press into God. Hey, I can dance in the Holy Ghost. No, you know, just fear. You know, I'm going to tell you, the big, if you look at the big picture, all of what's going on is the Antichrist spirit. Everything in the whole world you see right now, it's against the church. And the main, the main spirit leading it is fear. Fear, fear of this, fear of that, fear of that. What if I don't make it? What if, what if I, hey, quit that what if stuff. Say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I mean, I, I'll tell you. My, my wife, she'll tell you. But when I was, the doctor said, listen, I want to go get you up to there to get a liver transplant. But there's, there's only one thing I can't do for you, that you have to do. He said, walk. I was walking like a little old man. I was just down the street. I get part way down. My wife said, let me go get the car. I said, no, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Let the weak Say, I am strong. You know? And you got to keep declaring it. You got to keep talking about it until you believe what you say. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Ooh, okay. Let me go on here. Apost as Apostle Paul said, and then we're going to minister to a few people, that's okay. I also have a couple of my staff here, my, my ministers, Pastor Vicky back there. She's from Chihuahua, Mexico. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. And then, and then a prophet Amos back there, all the way from Louisiana. <laughs> I actually, uh, they're in here. In, they live in California. but you know, They're just part of our team. What was it? Two weeks ago, we prophesied to 700 people. <laughs> Put us to work. So anyhow, Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3, 12 to 14, Exactly what Pastor Eric was Not that I have already attained. I haven't arrived yet. Guess what? Or am perfected. But I press on that I may lay hold of that which for Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Brethren, I don't count to myself to have apprehended. But one thing, one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind me. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the, pri the, goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Are you pressing to a higher calling? Anything I, listen, let me just tell you, anything I can do from this pulpit, you can do. Come on, you can do out there in the street. If I can preach, you can preach. If I can prophesy, you can prophesy. If I can cast out devils, you can cast out devils. You are all ministers. You're just not all called to pulpit ministry. 1 Corinthians 14, 39 says you can all prophesy, that all may learn and all may be encouraged. How come we're not all doing it? We haven't been taught. We haven't caught it. 
But, but and the simple terminology for prophecy is hear his voice and repeat what you hear. My sheep know my voice, and they don't follow another. How many are here are his sheep? I mean, here you say, bah. okay, <laughs> I'm in the right place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let me just about wrap this up. But let me look at Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and all those who dwell in it. For, it is he, for he has founded it upon the seas and established upon the, wars, the, the waters. Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. One of the times, you know the biggest idol most of us have? Look in the mirror. I say, Lord, help me kill that guy daily. You don't know your flesh nothing but to crucify it. He shall re now the one who has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up to a soul idol nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Meditate on that. The blessing comes from those who seek his face. Not all the time we're seeking his hand. My name is Jimmy. I'll take all you can give me. But I don't want to give nothing in return. But God wants to give you so much that you can't even contain it. You know what the double portion is? Where you have enough for you, your family, everything you need, and you can help somebody else. You know, in most of the church, I heard about 8 to 10% of the church as a whole tithe. And the Bible said, if you don't do that, you're cursed with a curse. So people went around, why am I going through all this struggle? I'm not doing that. Because people trust their money more than they do their God. Yeah. Man, I can tell you some stories how God has just multiplied things, multiplied things, multiplied things. You know, just crazy. Just let me tell you one little one. We're in Florida. And I took four kids with us. We got the cheap flight, got into Mobile, Alabama, drove down to Florida. Last day of the conference, we got $37 left. They're taking the last offering. I said, well, I'll give seven. Keep the 30, put a little gas in the car. Of course, that nowadays, it doesn't go nowhere. But, and, and buy the kids McDonald's or something. And uh, I heard the Lord say, give it all. I went, okay, Lord. So I'm walking up there to give it all. My wife doesn't know what's going on, but the Lord tells her, he's sewing into your new outfit. Well, so we sold the money afterwards, conference all over, everything's done. And stand around talking, almost everybody's gone. And a pastor from Korea came up, shook my hand. I thought he put his name and address and paper, put it in my pocket. On the way back, I said, this pastor handed me his, his address and stuff. And I pull out, it wasn't, it was two $100 bills. So, I, so, so for some strange reason, I took $100 and gave it to my wife and said, here, buy yourself a new outfit. But God already told her I was sewing into it. Well, then God told her, sew that $100. She sewed that $100 out of the, and she wanted a new outfit because we're getting ready to go to Singapore and preach, Singapore and Malaysia. And she sewed that $100. My sister calls her out of the blue and says, I want to take you shopping. Spends $300 on her. Wait, wait, wait. That's not the end. We went to Singapore, and they bought her some clothes in Singapore. Then we went to Malaysia, and they took us to a tailor and said, you pick out the material, we'll make clothes for you. $37 bought her a whole wardrobe and got us some stuff too. It's, it's, it's not the amount, it's the obedience. Hallelujah. So, so be obedient. You know, a lot of times we'll, we'll ask each other, what did God tell you to give? He told me 50. How about you? 100. Well, let's go with 100. Okay. You know, because you can't outgive God. Okay. Let me go on. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Guess what? The Lord strong and mighty in the battle. Jesus is not a wimp. He's a warrior. Hail, hail to the Lion of Judah, to the great I Am. Another name for him is Lord Sabaoth, the captain of the host of heaven's armies. 
And I was in Florida last year, and I'm just talking, uh, we're worshiping God, and I heard the Lord say, I'm loosing my angel armies. And then I heard the apostle get up on the platform and says, God just told me he's loosing the angel armies. You are not alone. We are not alone in this place. There are armies of angels all around. Nothing can stop what God wants to do. The only thing that can stop you from fulfilling your destiny is you. You know, God has a sense of humor. Every morning I get up and look in the mirror and God and I both laugh. When I comb my hair, everything looks a little better. I tell people I go by the 11th commandment. Thou shalt not sweat it. That was part of the curse. The sweat of your brow. Hallelujah. So be strong. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Let me finish. I only need to minister to a few people here. How many would like a word from the Lord? And I already saw some things for you, AJ. But I'm telling you. Whew. Lift up your hands. Lift up your heads. And lift up your hands. Let the king of glory come in right now. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts, Lord Sabaoth, you are the king. <sighs> We're going to stand up in a second. We're going to do a little activation here. Romans 8, 16 and 17 says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If we indeed suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Hey, if you're suffering for something you did, that's your fault. If you're suffering for the cause of Christ, rejoice. Because great is your reward in heaven. Now, everybody stand on your feet. I want to I, I do this one activation. And, and then I'm on my wife and I and Prophet Amos Vicky. We come and minister to some people. Uh, but I like to do this. It's called practicing his presence. Do you know John the Baptist talked about Jesus? And he said, he must increase. I must decrease. And a lot of people say, I got to decrease so he can increase. It doesn't work like that because I gets in the way. If you can take I out of sin and reduce it to zero, you become a son. So what I want is watch. When you lift up your hands, you're going to say, Lord, increase. And then just allow his presence to increase from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. Now, I'm, the reason I'm saying this is because when you allow him, like John the Baptist said, he must increase. When you allow him to increase, guess what's going to happen to you? You will decrease. And when you can decrease to zero, that's when you come into him. And that's totally increase. Lord, help them. Lord, increase from the bottom of our feet to the top of our head. Fill us again, Lord, that we become nothing, that you become our all in all. Here comes peace. Uh, Prince of Peace is walking right in here today. Whatever you came in with, wasn't of God, let it go. He's filling you up afresh and anew. And drink it in. Just drink it in. Lord, fill everyone in this room with your glory, with your presence, with your love, with your joy, with your peace.
And sometimes we just need to be still, not say a word. Just be still and know that he is God. It's okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, you can do this all the time. A lot of times before I even go to meet, I say, Lord, fill me up. But it's not about me today. It's about each of us being obedient. When you learn to practice His presence, His presence will overwhelm you. I'll tell you, the peace will flood into your mind, into your spirit. Everybody flows a little bit differently. But you know, a lot of people, they just don't know how to be still and know that he is Lord. They don't know how to get quiet before the Lord. Be still. Just receive. You don't need to say a word because he's here. Just receive. Holy Spirit, he's gentle. He grieves very easily. He's a gentle man. He won't talk if you're speaking because he has manners. Just receive. Hallelujah. Someone's getting healed in their left knee right now. I don't know who it is, but if that's you, can I just reach out and grab it? Sometimes I get these what they call as sympathetic pains. I feel the pain of someone else. God starts healing that person. Even someone with a tight neck. Hey, let the Lord touch you right now. Loosen up with it. Relax. I have this word for AJ and his wife. The Lord says, son, I put an apostolic mantle and anointing on you. And that's a governmental thing that I'm going to begin to shift and do because I called you to minister, not to not just to the body of Christ, but the governmental leaders. And I'm going to bring some pe those people around you. Could be a mayor, a councilman. But then God will say, I will take it up the ladder. Because there's a lot of people. Like in the days of old, they trusted the prophets. They trusted them to have a word in season. And God says, but for the both of you, daughter, you're very discerning. You pick up on some things. And you, just, you can say, honey, stay away from that. And sometimes if the, if the man don't listen, he gets in trouble. Not with the woman, with God. Because she picks up on things. But the Lord says, I put even a prophetic mantle in you, daughter, to not just see the, the fruit of the problem, but go to the root. A lot of people need the root severed so they can get healed, so they can be made whole. And there's healing in your hands. There's going to be healing in your words. And, and even the both of you, one could put a thousand to flight, two could put ten thousand. So both of you can even, God says, I'm going to raise you up as a commander in my army to bring the troops in to teach them how to fight the good fight of faith, how to trust me with everything because you have known what it's like to, to stumble, fall, get back up and trust him with everything. And God says, so you'll be there for them. And he says, I have the troops ready. And they will come and they will line like David's triple D company 
in, in doubt, in debt, in, in, in discouraged. But then God, they became his mighty men. God says, you're gonna, I'm going to put some mighty men around you that will watch over you, protect you. Where others came and they tried to, uh, they tried to get in the inner circle, but they caused more damage than good. And God says, but I moved them out of the way, and now I'm putting some new ones around you, around and about you, to see you come into your fullness. Because God says, you are going to bring some transformation to areas and people. And boom, I just heard there's some promotion coming from God. That more doors are going to open for you to speak to people. But you're going to speak more by the Spirit, by the anointing. Yes, you're going to have messages. Yes, you're going to have a... a, a an agenda, but the Spirit will shift the agenda sometimes and change it, and you will speak prophetically, minister prophetically without a note even around, and you say, God said, throw it out and just flow, and you got a new flows coming because the river of God needs a flow, and from central California to the north to the south and all around, and you even even go to the states around, but and a lot of those states uh, got the same situation, but God says, it's a time to shift, shift states, shift areas. And God says, I put a shifting anointing in you. He said, you've been in fourth gear for a long time, but now you're going to put it up in overdrive and put it into high gear. So, Lord, we just bless this couple. We release a fresh mantle, a fresh anointing, a fresh breakthrough in the name of Jesus. freedom. Oh, these hands will heal many. These hands will heal many. Miracles, signs, and wonders. And the Lord would say, daughter, even from now on, you're going to begin to dream. The Lord says the enemy came and, and blew the dust over, over your dreams, and you, th and you thought you put it, and they were put in the shelf. And, and, but the Lord says, I'm blowing a new breath of my spirit. There's a new wind of my spirit coming on both of you. And those things that you thought were lost and gone, the Lord says, daughter, I put that passion, I put the dream in your heart. And it is yes and amen, the Lord says. And even now, the Lord says, Stretch out your tank pegs. Stretch out your tank pegs. For I'm going to multiply. I'm going to increase. Even now you're going to see that you both walk under an open heaven. Even now you're going to see the visitation of the Lord says the Lord of hosts, for I'm with you to do a mighty work in you and through you, says the Lord. And the Lord says, daughter, I'm stirring up the wisdom in you. I'm stirring up that spirit of counsel. The Lord says, I'm stirring up the deliverance, and I'm going to bring many who are bound, many who have been abused. And the Lord says, you're going to set them free in my name. And the Lord says, son, the treasures that are in darkness, the, the, because of the father's heart the lord says you're going to raise up many many who are imitators many who are imitators of you oh father I, we just seal this over them in jesus name in jesus uh, this is not a spectator sport it's participation so as you're praying as we minister to people uh, it's more powerful more anointed and also if we're going to minister to you make sure you have a cell phone because we believe in accountability. So we record the prophecy. So the one receiving, the one giving the word is accountable. And the one receiving is accountable. Okay? So God bless you. Uh, Prophet Amos. Yes, 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 yes. Pastor, pastor, pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's keep praying, everyone. Just keep praying. You know, I kept hearing this word a moment ago, and I kept saying, no, Lord, I can't give that. I can't do this. And the Lord says, do it. And it's a, it was a secular song back in the 70s by a group called Sly and the Family Stone. And I kept saying, no, Lord, I can't. Lord, do it. The Lord told me to tell you, I'm going to take you higher. For the Lord says, this is the day and the time. For the Lord says, you have withstood prosecution. You have withstood the opposition that have come against you because of that which I have called you to do. And the Lord says, you have been faithful in doing so. And the Lord says, in my faithfulness, I am going to take you higher. 
But the Lord says, you have stood and withstood. But there have been many that have come against you. But the Lord says, it has become because of my grace. It is because of my power and my authority that I have placed within you. And the Lord says, even as you have stood, the Lord says, more is becoming available. For even as you have taught on more being available, the Lord says, I am going to grant much, much more unto you. For the Lord says, even in my word, I says, I am able to do exceeding abundantly. I am able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. The Lord says, I will do exceeding abundantly above all that you have asked and above all that you have thought that was impossible even in your life. For the Lord says, I am healing your home. For the Lord says that I am moving even now. For there is a movement that is taking place in your home. And the Lord says, I am causing healing to flow even from the top. But there are things that have taken place and the Lord says, you have cried out to me. And in my faithfulness, I am causing a change even this very night. But the Lord says, you will begin to see that which I have promised you because you have asked. And as a family and as a couple, the Lord says, I have promised you. And now you will begin to see my promises come to pass in your life. For it is I that is moving. For the Lord says, I am healing your body even. The Lord says that there is a healing taking place right now. And the Lord says, receive, receive, for it is yours, my son. And the Lord says, I'm giving you a boldness, my daughter, even a greater boldness than you have experienced. And the Lord says, you will begin to see miracles even as you speak. And the Lord says, that boldness, that boldness will go a long way. For I have much planned for you. And I'm causing it, and I'm causing it to come to pass in your life even this day and in this hour, says the Lord. Amen. There's a lady right back there. The wall, you, it looks like you're wearing dark black or you have your hair in a bun. Come here, please. recording this so I want them to see your face so that you know we record this so that you can take it home and write it down and Paul told Timothy to war with the prophetic word that was spoken over him we don't put the prophetic word on a shelf we war over it so your name is Armida Armida father I just thank you for Armida and the Lord would say daughter before the foundation of the world, I called you, and I chose you, and I say you are mine. And I hear the Lord say, daughter, those things that have held you back, kept you back, and it's come down the generation. The Lord says, I'm breaking the mold. I'm breaking you out. The Lord says, you are a daughter of Abraham, and the curse is over, says the Lord. The Lord says, daughter, I'm calling you to walk in a, under an open heaven, and the Lord says, you're in the days to come. You're going to begin to see yourself in a whole different way. You're going to see yourself as my daughter, my daughter, and da daughter, I say, come. Come sit beside me in heavenly places. For even now, I put a scepter in your hand. And I say, daughter, decree. Begin to decree my word. For those things that you decree, says the Lord, they will come to pass. And I hear the Lord say, daughter, I'm visiting your home. I'm visiting your home in a new way. Oh, it's going to bring a new life. It's going to blow. It's going to bring transformation. This is your season of restoration. This is your season of transformation. This is a season of renewal. This is a season of the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. And, and the Lord says, I'm changing uh, your, the identity that the enemy has put in try to put upon you. The Lord says you will no longer see yourself through those eyes. But the Lord says even the shame is cut off. It's been cut off. It's been uprooted, says the Lord. And the Lord says 
decree, decree. Dance the dance of the Harabasheke. Dance, daughter, dance, daughter, dance. For this is the year of your turnaround. This is a time of rejoicing. This is your ju jubilee year, says the Lord, where even the debt, even the debt will, will come. The Lord says, I'm taking you out of debt. Be faithful. Be willing and obedient, and I will take you out of debt. The Lord says, you're going to know me as your provider. You're going to know me as your healer, the healer of the soul, the healer of all the abuse the enemy has, the condemnation that he, the lies, says the Lord. The Lord says, it's time to put him under your feet. For you are called victorious, says the Lord of hosts. And the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord shall be on you and your children and your children's children, says the Lord. And even those who are in prison, the Lord says, it's freedom. It's freedom time. Where it seemed impossible, God said, it's freedom, freedom, freedom. Father, we just bless my sister. Hallelujah. If you're a young person, 25 years or younger, come up here. We want to lay hands on you. Bring an impartation to you. Come on up. Love the young people. Want to see God move? Come on. Hallelujah. Just make a line right across, all the way across. Awesome. No, bring them all the way. There's a big, you can go all the way across the platform, all the way across. Yeah, line them up individually. Hallelujah. Now, I want to say this. We don't lay empty hands on empty heads. We lay anointed hands on anointed heads. And we release the power of God. It's not about you feeling something. It's about you receiving something. And a lot of you will be able to start hearing for God in a greater way. The power of God will touch you. And even the young ones, the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And you're going to move into different dimensions. Now, we might prophesy, but it will be short and quick. And we will minister to each one of you. And God will use it. Hey, champion, how you doing, man? I love it. Okay. Now, honey, should we just lay hands on them that way and I come this way? Okay. Okay. We're just we're going to impart to you. Now, if they pray for you, we're not going to get all these recorded. We're just going to, as much as we can, we will do the best we can to do this quickly and just maybe give you a short word. Like, I was in a meeting in Northern California recently, and there was a little girl about 10 years old. I said, you have a business anointing. I found out that little girl already has a business, and she's 10 years old. Already has a business. Man, it's pretty amazing. Okay, thank you, Lord. And when we come, just, when we come by, when they hands, just raise your hands and receive. Okay, each one, raise your hand. Okay, raise your hands up. What's your name? Lord, the Lord says, son, J.D., I have plans for you and purposes for you that's greater than you. Don't look at people. Don't, don't try to please people, but try to please me. And as you do, you're going to see that I will raise you up and you'll be able to speak to many people. God says, I'm going to make you radical for me. <laughs> you don't have to be radical for anybody else, but I will make you as a difference. You'll be a difference maker to people your age. God said, don't follow their ways. Follow Jesus, and he's going to use you to impact their lives. And don't worry what people say negative about you. That's not what I say. I say good things about you, and I have good plans for you. Lord, I just impart right now your anointing now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's your name? JJ. JJ, JD. Hey, everybody got initials. Okay. Lord, I thank you for JJ. Rababo, rebaba, ramabo, koso, tulababasa. Oh, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on JJ. 
God's working on some heart issues and going to deal with some things. Not that you got a bad heart. It's just that some issues that he wants to bring around to you to show you, to shift you into everything he has for you because he's got a lot for you, a lot to do in you. Father, I release this mantle on him, this anointing, this anointing. Just receive. Just receive right now. Receive that. What is your name? I thank you, Lord, for the anointing right now. Just lift your hands. Lift your hands up. Say, Lord, I receive everything you have for me. Fill me with your power, with your love, with your purpose for my life. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Okay, receive that. Bless you. you just the way you are. Don't try to be like nobody else. Just be, the, just be the best you can be for him because he has a plan for you and a purpose for you. It's even greater than you. He said, and I'll make sure you're dressed with the best and you have nothing less. I'll give you all the good things that your heart desires as long as you line up with my heart's desire for you. And my heart's desire for you is only to bless, only to see you have favor, only to see you have freedom and breakthrough. Don't worry about what anybody else says. Just get close to me. Because as you get close to me, I will make many things happen for you in so many good ways. And, I just, and he says, and you don't have to change uh, your hair or anything else for anybody else. Because I like you just the way you are. And I bless you in Jesus.
let anybody tell you you're not a champion, you're not a winner. You, you are, are a winner. winner. And you will go long distance. You are you will go Watch and see what I do. Watch and see. And I just press it down.
Christ is Lord, you are beyond amazing, you are beyond amazing, you are beyond amazing, amazing God.
Like a mighty rushing wind, see you breaking. Like a mighty rushing wind, see you breaking.
it now. Lord, we cry out for your son. Release it now. Release it now. Lord, we cry out.
Let your fire fall as we worship you. Let your glory come as we honor you. Holy fire. Holy fire. Holy fire. Give you praise. Lift 
Take us deeper, take us further, Lord. Take us deeper. Take us deeper. I want to go further, Lord. Take us deeper. Take us in to the holy of holies. Take us in by the blood of the Lamb. Take us in to the holy of holies. Take the coals, cleanse my lips. Here I am. Take us into the holy of holies. Take us in by the blood of the Lamb. Take us into the holy of holies. Take the coal, cleanse my lips, here I am. Take the cold, cleanse my lips, here I am. Take me past the outer court to the holy place, past the brazen altar. Lord, I want to see your face. Take me by the crowds of people priests who sing your praise. Lord, I hunger and thirst for your righteousness. It's only found one place. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me in to the holy Holy, take the coal, cleanse my lips. Here I am. Take me into the holy, holy. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the Holy, holy, take the cold, cleanse my lips. <laughs> 